Good. All right, Matt. Uh, Fighters Only, World MMA Awards. Uh, what brings you out? Is this your first time here? This isn't my first time. You know, I used to fight in the UFC, and uh, I mean, it's been a while. And uh, the last time I was here about 10 years ago when I was still employed with the UFC. But uh, this year, I'm here as a presenter, you know, and uh, we'll see how that goes. You know? Despite your very successful pro wrestling career, how often are you asked about your UFC tenure? Uh, you know, I get asked about the UFC quite a bit, you know, just because it was such a... You know, the beginning, the start of like kind of my TV stardom with the Ultimate Fighter, then the career in the UFC, and then, you know, getting fired for, you know, X, Y, and Z, and what have you, you know, so, yeah, you know, it's just a full circle kind of thing, and uh, I always get asked about it, though. And I know, like, a lot of people look at that tenure you had with the UFC, the way that it ended, and how you were able to kind of take a left turn and go in a arguably even more successful direction. So when you view that yourself and reflect on that and all the things Dana White said about you when you were you parted ways, I mean, how good does that make you feel about your decision-making abilities? You know, it, it feels really good. But on top of that, you know, I kind of got to thank Dana for that because if he would have just fired me and not said anything, nobody would have probably knew about me. But putting me and putting me on blast and doing that, I think a lot of people could relate with me, you know, if I've had their parents or their boss talk to them like that. And uh, I think that's kind of where, you know, that bro character kind of started. And then making my way through pro wrestling wasn't easy, too, especially with the, uh, you know, stigma of being that guy that got fired, you know, so, uh, but I think, you know, every good journey needs a good story, you need ups and downs, you know, there's like a good pro wrestling match, you know. We see, um, despite them being such, so different, MMA and pro wrestling still have some crossovers, we see some people jump, has there ever been any thoughts in your mind, any opportunities, like, maybe I'd be able to do one of these? Again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'll say this. There's been a lot of talk. I've been talking to a couple of promotions. I don't want to get into it until it's official. But uh, I think 2024 is a very big possibility that I get back in the ringer cage and fight again pretty soon. So. I guess kind of what's the motivation there? Is it just, you know, good business opportunities? Is it do you feel like there's still a story in Matt Riddle and MMA that hasn't had its final chapter written? Yeah, you know, I feel like, and maybe this is a bad theory or a bad idea, I feel like you got to get, like, beat up to leave, you know? And I feel like I left the UFC on a four-fight win streak, then won another fight in Titan FC, and, you know, kind of just left and went to pro wrestling. Did good. Still doing it. Make, pro wrestling's awesome, but still want you know, I still want to get beat up, you know? I got I want to have my exit, you know? But uh, we'll see, you know? Maybe somebody beats me up. Maybe I keep winning. Who knows, you know? And how much, um, obviously, what you do is you got to be tremendously athletic and I'm sure you're training every day but how much MMA training have you done since you left if any uh, I train probably a couple times a week uh, not so much I'm not getting into those firefights hard sparring like going for knockouts or anything but at the same time I do a lot of mitt work I do jujitsu at least a couple times a week you know just got my black belt this year I mean I should have got it a while ago but you know pro wrestling it's hard to put that time into the jujitsu gym but I'm focusing a lot on that so you know because I've had that itch you know so we'll see thanks thank you okay. thank you uh, people you know people thought that they would never see the day that CM Punk would be back in WWE is there a time we could see you back with the UFC I mean I say never say never if the opportunity's right I don't really hold a grudge you know and I, I mean I talk a lot of shit sorry but I like, talk a lot of trash but uh that's about it, you know. So if there's business to be had, I'll get business done. Well, what is what is it about the me, the fences being able to be mended in these businesses? Well, for me, I mean, there's no fence that really needs mending. You know, he had his decision, I had mine. You know, he went his way, I went my way, and I had great success, and so is he. So for me, there's no problem. You know, it's just a matter of if you'd want me to work for him, or if you'd want to pay me again, and he doesn't have to. You know. And if I could just ask you, how, how shocked were you that CM Punk? Uh, mended fences with WWE in his back. You know, I'm not surprised because WWE, the one thing they like, they like money, and CM Punk is money, just like he was money in mixed martial arts. So you can't, you can't argue a man that's money. But uh, yeah, then that's just like the UFC. I know if I fight, I'll sell tickets. So just if they want. And you did say 2024 could be the year where we see you in the ring or the cage. If you had to say which one was more likely to happen first, perhaps. 
more likely probably a ring I would like to get back in the cage. So. But we'll see what happens. Interesting. You know? Uh, and, I'll, and I'll be at that Jake Paul fight now, so we'll okay. see, see what happens. Yeah, so, okay, yeah. interesting. We may, see, we may see you pop up in some way. Some way, somehow. You, you'll see me. Maybe that's the ring you're talking about. Possibly, you know. Maybe it's the brass ring and we're reaching for it. I don't know. I don't know. So, yeah. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you.